So I'm going to say the statement up front and just let it land where it lands. Your heart needs healing. Yes, you. Your heart needs healing. And healing is not just a one-time event. It's an ongoing process. You see, there are areas of your life that God's nature needs to invade, needs to connect to. We're on a lifelong journey of learning who God is, learning who we are in Christ, and learning how to live that out in a day-to-day journey and experience. Allow me to read an excerpt from my book, The Heart Healing Journey, because it helps me to relay this point. Sometimes the most obvious things we need seem hidden, even though they are in plain sight. Most of the solutions for our life are very simple, yet often ignored. One of the greatest practices that is neglected is the need to cultivate and care for the life of the heart. Sin has definitely infected our hearts with various forms of brokenness. But the fact that we overlook the issues of the heart keep us in a shallow lifestyle, without depth in our transformational experiences. We are broken people living in a broken world, attempting to live meaningful lives, but we are often so unaware of how our brokenness affects us. In addition, we're so scared of letting our vulnerabilities show. Life and the enemy have trained us to hide our brokenness at all costs. Meanwhile, the brokenness is festering and having a relational impact. Can we all just admit that each of us have various areas of brokenness in our lives? If we can get honest that we are all broken to some degree, then we would have a lot more effective conversations and experience more authentic transformation. You see, despite what many say, becoming a Christian does not make your brokenness just completely disappear. Don't mistake what Jesus paid for as a quick fix approach. You're on a journey. You are on a journey of aligning your full self with all that Jesus paid for. Now, the goal of what I'm saying here is not to lead you to walking around going, oh, I'm so broken, I'm so terrible. No, it's just to make you more aware of how our brokenness influences our life and allowing God to interact with us from our hearts rather just symptomatic living or living from our heads or just trying to in mustering up energy to experience transformation. You see, if we address spiritual growth, if we address spiritual maturity without addressing underlying brokenness, there's going to be some problems. Number one, you're going to chase symptoms all your life. So you're just going to try to stop doing the things that you don't want to do. And you're just going to try to find new tools and, and disciplines and things to try to try to fix those areas. And you're going to come back to the same spot again. Then you're going to live in what I call PDC, which is performance driven Christianity. From a scriptural standpoint, it's really being influenced by the nature of the law, which gets you fixed on kind of do's and don'ts, task lists, and my good outweighs my bad, hopefully. And if I do, if I don't, and then you just always end up being exhausted in the end. People say, well, I don't live by the law, but you're influenced by the spirit of it in your performance-based living, achievement, perfectionism, being constantly driven, constant striving, endless energy being exhausted, and there's no refreshment in your heart and in your life, and it loses the relational wiring. So you become more focused on trying to do more, so if, if your answer to every problem is you need to do more, you're in performance-based living rather than learning to receive more. Many times we just chase more disciplines or I, I need to do these more things and then I'll, then I'll experience change. And then what happens is we end up in exhaustion. We find our lives moving from just different levels of burnout, stages of exhaustion because we haven't learned to receive. You see, when we deal with the heart and interact with God from the heart, you have to learn to receive. It's not something you can earn. It's something you believe by learning to receive and aligning your inner heart and life with the truth that sets you free in a relational context. Not just reading something, checking off something on a list. Truth isn't something to just be learned in your head. It's to be experienced with your heart. And truth is a person. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we're interacting with him, and he has called us to be led to the Father. And so the beauty is through Christ, we can have an interaction with the Father. And Jesus says, if you'll come to me with all your weariness and burdens, I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke, because I want to get rid of this exhaustion in your life. To start living from the heart. When you live from the heart, you start recognizing the baggage you're carrying. The message of the gospel releases us from the pressure and the baggage. It doesn't just release us from the power of sin and blatant sin. It releases us from those burdens and those pressures and those tasks and things that are fueled by a pressure to get it right, get it done. You see, and without addressing the broken issues of your heart, you'll fall into that. Because when you allow yourself to heal and allow yourself to recognize broken areas, you'll recognize broken motives that drive you to feel loved and to feel right before God based on all the stuff that you do. Number four, without addressing underlying brokenness, we'll try to experience spiritual maturity, but really we're going to avoid God in shame. The idea of spending time with God or praying or the ideas of his holiness are creating a sense of shame within us where we hide rather than running to him and approaching him freely and boldly, as the Bible says, coming boldly before the throne of grace. Number five, if we try to experience spiritual growth or spiritual maturity without addressing underlying brokenness in our life, we're going to very easily condemn and judge the people around. You'll shame others. You'll, your instant reaction to what people are going through will be impatience, will be to quickly judge, because that's really what you're seeing in yourself. You quickly judge and condemn in your own life. So then your relationships are more guilt-driven rather than relationship and love-driven. Is this making sense? So number six, then you'll be living in a shallow existence, shallow relationships, shallow interactions with God. And what happens is when we have a shallow interaction, in, in, in especially in our relationship with God, it's like being injected with a vaccine. You see, a vaccine gives you a dosage of the real thing. So if you take a flu vaccine, you're getting a dosage of the flu, which the theory is it will help build an immunity or a resistance to the flu coming to you. Well, many people in Christianity have been inoculated to the real thing because they got a dose of it. It was just a sense of knowledge, but they never experienced it. So they're deceived in thinking they possess something in their life when they don't. And we're living a shallow existence and we're content with that. We're content with just a quick little sermon on Sunday or a quick little this in the morning or just a quick little that. And we don't know how to go deeper. We have no references. And that's what I want to help equip you with in your life and journey. But really the saddest symptom is that there's a loss of joy in our life. Because true enjoyment is a heart experience. It's a heart expression. It's a heart lifestyle. The joy of the Lord is actually meant to be your strength. But look around. Do we really see true, sustaining joy manifesting in our culture, in our relationships, in our small groups, in our church circles? Do we see that consistent joy going on? It's there, but it needs to be cultivated in a much more intentional way. And it can only be done when we allow God to do a heart work in our life to let that joy that is truly there begin to bubble up and really be experienced. So I pray this video encourages you to position your heart in a new way, to learn to receive from God to allow him to bring to the surface. You don't have to do this in, in, in a cave and in introspection for the next 10 years. Just position your heart to be ready to say, yes, I'm willing to receive. And God, reveal the areas in my life that are broken, that need to be addressed by who you are, by your love, your grace, your kindness and patience, and your truth that will truly set me free. I pray this adds value in life to the healing experience of your journey.